Hey uh, everyone, welcome to Yubi Chef, uh, my weekly video uh, where I show you how to plate up the different dishes that we've done, 10 dishes in total. Um, would you believe it, a year old today, so a year since we've started doing the at-home service. Um, first of all, of course, it was just on the Isle of Wight and then from August time it was across uh, on the mainland. Um, so we're of course going to be carrying it on. Um, it's proved really, really popular. Uh, we all really enjoy it here because we're essentially doing the same thing. Of course, we don't get to see you guys in person. Uh, but via the video we really feel like we're still connecting with our guests. Um, next week's menu, um, available to order now, sea tuna niswas, lovely, yellowfin tuna sustainable is on, we've got a croquette of confi duck leg on there as well, cockle van, risotto milanese, pink lady tart to tan, uh, uh, pink lady apple that is, tart to tan, uh, so brilliant menu next week, you've got until this Sunday to order if you'd like that delivered. So let's get cooking now, take you through 10 dishes, um, and I'll show you some little tips on how to plate it up um, just so you can kind of be ahead of the game at home uh, and really enjoy cooking the Ubi Chef menu. So first course on Ubi Chef menu this week is our weekly bake. We've been making a lot of crackers recently, uh, we've got tarim slata, that kind of a thing, uh, but this week we're doing a seaweed focaccia. Keep it in the foil, really, really important, on a tray, about five to seven minutes in the oven. In it goes, that's just gonna heat through. And then I've got my seaweed butter here, so a lovely salted butter, just with all sorts of different seaweeds whipped in there. Uh, let that come up to room temperature, and then I'm going to turn that out onto my board uh, when we're ready to go. So back in about five minutes, and I'll show you how to plate the bread up. So just grabbing my catcher out now. So be careful of the tray. So unwrap it in the foil. And you'll see we've put this lovely big chunk of the catcher. Look at that. Lovely mould and salt on the top, move our tray out of the way. Now what I'm going to do, just before I serve it, I'm just going to trim off the edge on that side and then I'm going to put it into a nice, nice four big chunks if you're serrated or really nice sharp knife to cut it with. Now rapeseed oil or olive oil, whichever you prefer, I love this Isle of Wight uh, rapeseed oil which is really nice and I'm going to put a tiny bit extra mould and salt on the top, like so. And then with your butter, what I'm gonna do, you can even scrape this out, put it into a little dish if you prefer. I'm just gonna dip the container just in some hot, you know, scalding water, nice and careful. And then bring it over, drain that off. And then look, just quickly, out it comes and onto my plate. So, tiny little bit more salt, Again, seaweed, that lovely salty kick is absolutely beautiful, so don't be afraid of, uh, of the salt. Then let's get our focaccia on there. Lovely glistening with all that oil. And there we go. So beautiful way to start the meal. Seaweed focaccia, whipped seaweed butter. Um, dive in with that one. More oil if you prefer to serve with it. Hope you enjoy our weekly bake. Uh, first course on the menu, um, I've got this terrine of salmon. So in here, um, make sure you take the paper off firstly, off the top, let's get rid of that. And then allow it to come to room temperature at least 15 minutes before you're gonna serve it. Because in, in the layers here, you'll see I've got this butter. Um, this is a tandoori spiced curry butter. And then I've got uh, cured salmon around the outside. Then I've got poached salmon going through the layers and of course still more cured salmon going through it. Now, really, really important that you let that come up to room temperature because you don't want to be eating like fridge cold butter. Um, we're serving it with our little pumpernickel bread here. So this is our own sort of style of pumpernickel bread. Lots of seeds going through in there. That's going to go in the oven about three minutes just to warm up. And then I've sent you with this uh, cucumber salad. So baby cucumbers. And we've like, sliced it very, very thinly, compressed it. And then it's got some pink peppercorn dust in there and some nice pink dill. What I'm going to do is take some of my dressing, now this is a lemon and dill dressing, just a little bit over the top of there, and then just give that a nice little mix. And now we'll just give it a, all a really good season up. And then with your terrine, um, make sure you take the clean from off for any outside, so either a little pair of tweezers or just a little point of a knife, and just take that layer of clean from off, and that's just gonna help it in transit um, gets you in perfect condition and then you can take a pallet knife right, right here and just just straighten up both sides make it all look perfect take a little bit of rapeseed oil on the top 
and then just rub that in. That's going to give it a lovely shine. Got tricks of a trade here. There we go. Now, often with a terrine, you might put a little bit of salt on the top. Um, I'm going to say here, don't you don't need that because wherever terrine has got all that cured salmon in, honestly, the seasoning is I think is really good on here so far. So let's get our terrine onto the plate. Beautiful colours. And then what I'm going to do is just sort of take your pieces of cucumber. I'm just going to like, pick those out with my tweezers. Uh, I'm just going to roll, see, so like roll them up slightly. And then I'm going to put a few going around the plate. And like here, you want to kind of be a little bit free with it. Don't make it look too placed and too unnatural. So that one, let's fold that up a little bit, get a bit of height. And also you'll see the pink peppercorn, a little dust going through it, which really makes all the colors stand out. Simple garnish to go with it. There's the next one. You've got about eight or so slices in here. So just space them nicely. One more going on. And then what I'm going to do, just take some of those pieces of dill, get all those on, like so. Dill with salmon, of course, lovely little match. Let's get rid of our dish, a little clean, and then back for more dressing. Just around the outside. Especially where you've got that like, curry butter, like always, the citrus in the dress, uh, dressing is really going to cut through the tree nicely. Look at that, looking lovely and fresh. Let's give a plate a little bit of a clean. And then, time for our pumpernickel. Let's pull that out. And we've sent you with one really nice char grill slice here. And all I'm going to do is just sit that just on the side like so. So, lovely little fresh starter. Uh, Torino salmon, all layered up with that tandoori spice curry butter. A lovely little cucumber salad, pumpernickel bread, enjoy. And now, next starter view. Uh, this is a buttermilk fried rabbit here. Um, so you see what I've done, uh, we've used the leg of a rabbit and we've taken all of the meat off of the, off of the bone, so there's no bone here at all. And you've got this beautiful uh, coating on the outside. So we marinate it in the buttermilk overnight uh, and then we dust it in a flour mixture uh, with, with some smoked pimento in there. Um, it's got some harissa seasoning, lots of secret seasoning. I can't give it all away. Uh, this is going to go in the oven for about 10 minutes. So here it goes. Make sure it's hot in the center though before you serve it. And really importantly, rest it for two minutes before you actually um, plate up so that it gives the meat just a little chance just to kind of relax. Um, I've got a carrot puree to go with, so really lovely smooth fishy carrot puree. I've got pickled carrots to go with it. I've got this serrano ham, just a little crumb uh, to add that salty little kick on the top. And again, some peppery stir uh, nasturtium leaves uh, to go with. So whilst I'm waiting for the rabbit, I'm gonna get my carrot puree warming up. I'm gonna get my plate ready. Um, plate's gonna be warmed up as well because the puree is uh, puree's warm on here. And then I'll show you how to plate this one up. Okay, so. I'm almost ready to plate here. That's my carrot puree, all ready to go. Let's get my plate out, just warm that up. There we go. And then bring the rabbit out. So rabbit's just gonna sit there. Now, that's gonna rest, so by the time we get to that, that will have rested nicely. Now, what I'm saying the carrot is get a nice, nice shaped spoon, and then take a little bit of puree, So I'm just going to put a little few spoons down, draw it across, turn that one round. So I'm just putting a few different spoons over the plate. There we go. So then your rabbit, take those pieces and just Put those over the top of the puree. 
that's almost going to sort of turn into our, you know, our sauce to go with it underneath. We've served you quite a lot in here. You don't have to put it all on the plate if you don't want to. I'm just going to put one more piece on there. Let's move that out of the way. And then next, you've got these pickled carrots. So in your tub, the pickled carrots are in a little bit of dressing. So drain them off before they go on. But you see, I'm just going to add a few little colours. You don't have to add, add every single colour on each piece. Let's get some carrot going on the top. Play with the colours as well on here. Get some stood up. Lovely uh, crunch still on the carrots, of course. And with that really like pickled, vinegary like taste behind them, that's going to go well with a sweet carrot puree and, of course, the spice from your buttermilk fried rabbit. So, I'm um, Almost happy with that, a few more. There we go, you see I'm like building up the layers, building up the colors, that's enough for me. Brilliant. And then your nasturtium leaves, just go around and again, so you can see all the nice little stalks on the top. I'm not dressing these because I've, I've saved a little bit of my dressing that was around the pickled carrots just to go over the top of it thereafter. So, see, lovely and delicate. Couple more on there. Maybe one more, just there. There we go. So, that's my uh, little nasturtions all on. Then, take a little bit of that pickling dressing, tiny bit on the top, tiny bit of oil, again olive or rapeseed, that will just dress those uh, nasturtium leaves and then finally get some of your lovely pieces of serrano and just a little bit of sprinkling on the top, touch around. There you go, look at it. Building up almost a painting. All different colours, different textures, flavours. Beautiful. So, clean, clean down. There we go. Little uh, uh, butter, buttermilk fried rabbit, carrot puree, nasturtium, pickled carrots, and that crispy serrano ham on the top. Really pleased with this one. Hope you enjoy it. So final starter uh, on the Uber Chef menu this week is a wild garlic velouté. It's bang on in season now. You can get out in local woods, pick the wild garlic, just pick it somewhere off the beaten track. So when I pick this one, I sort of climb the slopes in the forest, pick it off of them so there's no dogs that are gonna be anywhere nearby it. Um, wild garlic velouté in here, we add a little bit of potato. It's potato based, cream. Uh, so really lovely, vivid coloured soup. Then we've got um, duck egg in here, breadcrumbs. That's gonna go in the oven five minutes just to heat back up again and re-crisp. Um, and then we're serving it with uh, wild garlic pesto here, aged parmesan. This is with uh, almonds in this one, so flaked almonds. Um, and then also, um, I hate using the wild garlic leaves uh, to eat or to put in salads, often people say, when they're like really big. But this is how you want to pick them, you see? Lovely little leaves, which if you get the wild garlic and you kind of, where you find it in the woods, push the leaves aside. These are the little ones which are fighting for the light underneath. So just pick those, wash them well. That's one of our garnishes. And then something a bit expensive, lovely bit of black uh, truffle in there. Smells absolutely awesome. So a bit of truffle. Um, so we'll get our velouté warming on. That's going, our eggs cooking. I'll get my plate heating shortly and I'll be back in a second just to show you how to plate this one up. So, over comes my uh, wild garlic velouté there. Remember, don't boil it because otherwise the colour uh, will go quite quickly and um, it can become like swampy. Um, so, got all my garnishes. Let's get the egg out of the oven. Out it comes. A little bit of molten salt just on the top of that egg. And then, okay, let's plate it. So let's pour our wild garlic velouté in. There we go. Um, and then next, I'm gonna put, give, a, give the pesto a nice little stir. 
and then a nice few little spoonfuls of the pesto. So basically as soon as I put my egg in there, I want to take it to the table pretty quickly, otherwise the egg's going to go soft. So get the egg, sit that in there, and then let's go, let's go. So wild garlic leaves, remember just the little ones, so we'll just get these going all through the velouté now. And then you just want your guests to kind of get that little spike of wild garlic. You don't want to taste it for, you know, the week after. So here we go. Lovely, dainty little leaves. They're not too strong. They're just the really early shoots. There we go. Maybe one more in there. Just on the top. And then time for the truffle. Little slices of truffle. Just look at them. They smell absolutely awesome. There we go. If you haven't held back, you've got a nice few slices in there. One on top. There we go. So simple as that. Beautiful soup. Wild garlic blue tape. Um, black truffle. Crispy duck egg. Wild garlic pesto. So on to my chicken pativier main course here for you now. I'm just going to show you how to put this together. First of all, the pativier. Uh, this is going to take about 25 to 30 minutes in the oven. Uh, but if you're unsure, just turn it over. A little knife just in the bottom or a temperature probe if you've got one. And just check it's piping hot in there. But we've got puff pastry around the outside. In here, we've got a potato fondant just at the bottom. Uh, and then we've got a braised chicken. So comfy chicken going through the middle. Um, and then we've got like a picked down kind of riette of chicken. Um, and then wild mushrooms on the top. So that's gonna go in 25 minutes in the oven. There we go. And then the garnishes for when that comes out. Here's my fricassee of peas, edamame beans, lettuce. I've got a smoked chicken sauce in there as well. So chicken, smoked pancetta. I've got some uh, little polenta chips here as well. Um, soft herbs and a tarragon oil. So we're back in about 25 minutes. Make sure you get your fricassee on the, on the heat. Um, it just needs to come up to, up to simmering really. Simmer it for a couple of minutes. It's all cooked, ready to go. And the polenta chips will take about five minutes in the oven, no more. Um, so we're back and I'll show you how to plate this one up. So just to heat up the fricassee here. As I said, really important. You don't need to cook it for that long. You just heat it up. Let's get our plate ready. So fricassee, I've got my herbs and I've got my tarragon oil ready to go. Right, let's bring out our tibia. No, that's really, really hot, be careful. Let's just put that onto our board. And then we've got our plenty of chips there ready to go. So, to plate this one up, nice and simple, just take some of the lettuce, the, the uh, peas, edamame beans, and you want to make a nice little sort of base on what to sit, in which to sit the tibia on. So, so I'm getting a nice bit of height on there. And then a few of those peas, etc., all the way around. Now I'm gonna get a bit of sauce as well. Like so. So this is like an all-in-one garnish here. So a bit more sauce. And then what I'm gonna do, get some of my herbs. I'm just gonna add a few of those around. In there I've got some chervil, got some nice little snip chives, pieces of tarragon. So obviously I'll go with a go with a dressing. So get rid of those. And then let's take a fish slice. And then carefully get your petivier, give it a little trim around it if there's any of the egg yolk where we've glazed it and sit on the tibia nicely on the top do a bit of a clean down and then I'm going to take some of my little baked polentas I'm going to put those around this is just polenta some nice parmesan in there and it's dusted in polenta and then just fried so a little few of them back to some of my herbs really Get some of that tarragon on there, really, really important that is. Lovely, lovely flavour with this. It's almost like a chicken pie, really. Posh chicken pie. 
some more herbs on the top, and a few more of those snip chives. So of course with spring, that's what I like now, all that vivid colours going on. There we go. So, that's enough of them. And then finally, give your tarragon oil a nice little stir. And then you want to split the sauce out with that tarragon oil. Again, even more like real aromatic flavours going on in there. So, got oil. And there we go. All finished. So, petivier of chicken. We've got the uh, pond of potato in the bottom. Then we've got a comfy chicken. We've got a little chicken rillette. Um, all in that puff pastry. Wild mushrooms in there as, as well. Fricassee peas, edamame beans, and uh, lettuce. Um, lovely, lovely main course. Really looking forward to diving into this one. Hope you enjoy it. So here we go, next course on the Uber Chef menu is uh, shellfish rock pool. So in here, um, you've got your foil container and then you've got this little foil, uh, foil parcel. So it's like almost on papillon. Now what I mean by that is it's baked in the parcel with stock uh, and the moisture in, in there. So that almost like steams the, steams the fish. Um, so I've got mussels in here, I've got turbot, I've got lobster, um, I've got little cockles, um, what else we've got, tiger prawns, scallops, uh, seaweed, um, all sorts of things are going on there. That's going to go in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes, so no longer, you don't, don't want to overcook it. And then the garnishes, I've got some spinach and some uh, little lovely Jersey raw potatoes. These are going to go in the oven for about 6 to 8 minutes, so we'll wait until our fish has been a little bit longer. And then my other garnishes, first of all, this little shellfish consomme. Uh, so this is made with the crab bones and, the, and uh, langoustine bones in there. And I've got some nice seaweed in there as well. So that will give it a lovely, fresh sort of taste, in, uh, taste of the sea. I've got um, rock samphire grass in here. And I've got some salmon ketter, little salmon eggs, and a lemon infused oil to go on the top. So be back in about 10, 12 minutes, and I'll show you how to put this dish together. Okay, so I've got my plate all ready to go and my little consomme is all heated up. Remember, don't boil it, just bring it up to the simmer, that's absolutely fine. So that's all very ready to go. Let's set my garnishes and then let's get the fish out of the oven and let's get our potatoes and spinach over as well. So, what you want to do, just bring your fish over, watch the foil, it doesn't get too hot before, so it's fine. Take a little pair of scissors. Now be really careful here because you get quite a lot of steam built up inside the papillon. So just, so you just carefully, see the steam all coming out of there? Get your nose in there, smell that. Absolutely beautiful. And look at that. So you see that there? Mussels, the cockles, tiger prawns. Uh, you see that I've added some samphire grass in there as well, flavor. Squid, lots going on. So let's leave that on there. Let's get our spinach working. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my spinach and create a nice little base on what to sit the fish. So that's all going to sit there. Just lose that. And then I'm going to take some of my potatoes. I'm just going to put some of these around. So these have just been cooked in a little like seaweed stock. So again, everything's got the flavor of a sea here. Just a few of those around like so. And then our fish. Mussels, get them again. Nice bit of height. There we go. And then let's get a fish slice in there. So you've got a lovely piece of turbot. Now that can be quite delicate. So I'm just going to take it out with that fish slice. Sit that on the top. Try not to disturb it too much. And then we'll get. Some squid, there we go. Little scallop there. Then we've got some prawns. Little nugget of lobster tail. Make sure that's on the top so you can see the colours. Some black tiger prawns. And then basically just, just played it all up nicely, really. Um, we've got a piece of lemon, but that's just been cooked with it, so I'm not suggesting actually put that on the plate though. So Get the rest of my little cockles out of there. Like so, and my final mussel. So, that's all on. Then we're gonna take a few of our fresh sea herbs. These are gonna get heated up 
with the heat of the um, consomme and I pour it over. So just but not nestle them in. It's supposed to be a rock pool, so you should see the nice little pieces of seaweed and see how it's rising up from that. So there we go. Happy with that. Maybe just one more. Lovely. A little clean down. And then get your consomme. You see it's got some seaweed in there as well. Let's just pour that over. And honestly, honestly guys, like I'm pouring it over and it just the smells coming off here are absolutely stunning. So fresh. Just gonna take some of those bits of seaweed. Just almost drape a few in the in the mussels. Got some lovely little dulce in there. A few more pieces. There we go, that's done. A little clean of a bowl. And then salmon ketter. So it's a nice big spoon of that. I'm going to sit it like a little jewel almost. In it goes. And let's get the rest of that out. That's my salmon ketter. And then just to finish, lovely citrusy lemon oil. You see, if you just pour that around, you then get these beautiful little golden dots just floating in your consomme. And that's it. So my shellfish rock pool, lovely selection of fish and shellfish in there. Uh, that shellfish consomme poured over the top, lemon oil and sea herbs. Hope you enjoy it. My vegetarian course uh, this week is a risotto spring flavours. So here I've got the risotto rice which has been uh, cooked to it in a veg stock. Um, I've got butter, a bit of parmesan on there and of course my cooking liquor. So this is lovely and starchy. You're just going to put that into your rice. This is all measured exactly. Um, onto your heat and then that will come up to the boil. Uh, turn it straight away right down and then simmer that for about four minutes whilst you're stirring it. Your potatoes, so again some Jersey Royals uh, being cooked uh, in a minted water. Um, they're going to go in the oven about five or so minutes to heat up. And also we've got here a little roasted gem lettuce and some new season asparagus spears uh, and again rock sandfire. Uh, you'll tend to find it this time in the menu, uh, sort of, of the year and going through. I'll use this quite a bit because it's one of my favourites. They're going to go in the oven as well, just to warm through. And then when we come back in a second, I've got a little lemon creme fresh. Um, we'll get our plate warmed up and I'll show you plating this up. Okay, so risotto, just about ready. In four minutes, kept stirring it. Plate here, ready to go. So, hot plate. You see that, nice and creamy. Keep it moving. That's all good to go. I've had a taste, I'm happy with that. And let's grab my sea herbs, new season asparagus. There we go, lettuce, that's baked, charred, and then we've got my little potatoes on there as well. So, let's get all of our risotto on into the centre. There we go. Hold on, and then just use the spatula just to get that nice and Spread out nice and even. There we go. Then up next, get my lettuce on there. Then place my potatoes again. As I said these have just been cooked in a lovely minted water, highly seasoned, so we don't need any extra seasoning on there. Then we'll get asparagus. It's a season now, just love it. You know, that's so many ingredients coming through. I mean, don't get me wrong, winter, you know, it's lots of, lots of nice stuff happening, but it's, it's the one that drags the longest for me. So, we'll get all of that. Then our rock samphire grass. Rock samphire is lovely and lemony, but it's it's not the same saltiness as of, of the, uh, the marsh samphire grass. And I, I usually gather this down the cliffs, um, south white, so around like Ventnor area often find quite a bit on church so that's all on and then get your creme fresh hot spoon little dip in there and then 
just take a lovely little spoon of that and just sit that in the center. Final touch of rapeseed or olive oil, again, whichever your prefer uh, preference is. There we go, so clean up the plate. And that's my risotto of spring flavors, lovely and light, lemon creme fresh on there, uh, roasted lettuce and the rock samphire. On to the desserts now, and the first one is this lovely uh, salted caramel, chocolate to lease. So we've got a chocolate base to it, then we've got a chocolate mousse, chocolate glaze. Uh, that's good, little flash, very, very quickly under the grill. It takes sessions, and then it just gives a lovely little mirror finish straight away. I've got a little few salt flecks I've put on the top of her as well. And then I'm gonna take my salted caramel sauce, cut off the end of the piping bag, and then just pipe it, however you want to pipe it really, but something like that. There we go. So, sauce is all on. And then what we'll do, take your fish slice, lift out that to lease, and then again, fish slice just under the paper, which we send it to you on. Then, Slightly off center, there it is. Then take a little spoon, just dip it in your water. I've got this caramelized banana puree just here. A little bit of that, just on the plate. And then take your popcorn, this is an espresso popcorn. So we've done it in a caramel, uh, and that caramel has got like a espresso just fed into it. So we're just gonna put some nice pieces of popcorn, just decorate it around, it's as simple as that. Almost little, little planets spinning around the, the centerpiece. So a couple more of them, that's it. Uber simple, salted caramel at least, banana puree and espresso popcorn. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, next dessert for you is this passion fruit bavoir. Uh, so in here we've got a lovely little set um, mousse in the bottom, um, passion fruit jelly just on the top. Um, really, really simple. Again, sit that on your plate. You've got these um, exotic fruits here. This is just in a lovely aromatic kaffir lime syrup in there. Uh, that's how we send it. Important to drain it off just put, so, as you put it on. So I'm just gonna start layering my fruits on. You've got kiwi in there, you've got mango, pineapple, Nice pomegranate seeds for that crunch on the top. But just basically plate it, make it look really, really nice. Use those pieces of pineapple to layer other things against. And then finally, let's get some more mango going on in there. Now that mango, the um, jelly just on the top, the passion fruit, really, really nice and um, kind of in the mouth, makes you kind of mouth water. Um, and that's of course you've got the rich mousse underneath so it all balances nicely together let's get a little bit more pomegranate seeds get them on the top and then finally a little bit of that kaffir lime syrup then just before we go to the table we'll get our coconut shortbreads just really on these served on the side like so, just so you can dip in. And then crispy coconut. This is right last second because it will go, will go soft fairly quickly once it's on the actual bavoir itself. Just use a little bit of that. Lovely little crunch, texture, color, flavor. Everything should be in that dish. And there we go, bavoir of passion fruit, tropical fruits on the top, and my little coconuts and uh, shortbreads on the side. Enjoy. Final course for you now, and this is our, our weekly cheese course. Um, this week it's a rock four panna cotta, which is set in the bottom of here, uh, port jelly on the top, um, and then it's coming with some fennel seed crackers. These we just put through the pasta machine, uh, bake, them, uh, bake them through the oven. Um, these, what I suggest is, put them on a baking tray, 
You don't have to do this, you can serve it at room temperature. I like to put a little bit of rape straw on the top and that's flash those through the oven. A couple of minutes, no more. So, pork dressing, which you'll have. Take a spoon, give it a good stir. You'll see it emulsify back together. Then take a spoon of that and dress it over your figs. So in here you see I've got figs, some compressed celery, little celery leaves. So give that all a nice stir, whoopsie daisy. Give that a stir, and then what I'm gonna do is layer them onto my jelly, like so. So we'll get another one on there. And then I'm gonna get some of those pieces of celery just compressed and just add those around. And this is again, a nice little bit of texture, lovely bit of, bit of crunch. And you've got some celery leaves in there just to dot about. So, spend a little bit of time. Here we go. Touch more celery leaf. And then this will be in time now for our crackers to be ready. So let's grab those out of the oven. And what I suggest here is either put them on the side or you can just sit a little bit and then you can go straight to the table. And these will all be ready just to get that rock for panna cotta underneath and spread it onto those uh, crackers and away we go. So there we go. Rockfall panna cotta, port jelly, salad of figs and celery, fennel seed crackers to finish with.